we are heading south. We are going to a Volkswagen Group factory where they produce Skodas um, in Ukraine. Before we jump into part two of our Ukraine road trip series, be sure to go check out part one. And if you click on the banner in the top right of your screen, that video will explain to you everything. Why we're here, what we're doing, and some of the stories of the people that we have met in Ukraine so far. Okay, let's get back to the video. And they've been housing uh, a lot of refugees. Um, so we have about a five hour drive through Ukraine. And you might be able to see this Ukrainian flags hanging everywhere. Um, and we're going past a fuel station, um, which doesn't have much fuel. So definitely still in a uh, country of war. As we made our way through the Carpathian Mountains, we passed through many towns, and for the most part, everything seemed normal. You would have never known that this was a country at war and some of the atrocities that were happening just, just a few hours away. The countryside was beautiful, and at times it reminded me of Pennsylvania. It reminded me of home. But every so often, we'd be reminded of the realities of what's going on here, seeing cars filled with bullet holes, and people coming to and from the front lines, it was surreal. It's an overused term, but it was. It was very real, and it's something that obviously we've never seen before. At the time of recording this, it's been weeks since we've been in Ukraine, but both of us are still kind of unpacking and understanding the gravity of the situation that's going on right now. After a few more hours of driving, and as we neared the Volkswagen factory, we decided to stop to get some more supplies from a supermarket. And as we wrapped up and were about to drive off, a security guard came outside and handed me my GoPro. Okay. As you could tell by my colorful language, I was very unhappy that I almost made a massive mistake. So big thank you to the security guard and the supermarket worker that realized I left the camera there and gave it to us before we left. Huge thank you because most of the footage that you're about to see, we would not have had. So after that, we made our way towards the Volkswagen factory for the night. It was only a short distance away and we weren't really sure what to expect. So Jamie called his contact here. His name is Victor and he got us inside the gates Everything was pretty quiet. After all, this was a Sunday night. Workers weren't around and most of the staff and facility were home with their families. Victor gave us a tour of the factory grounds, showing us where they test some of the vehicles that come off the assembly line, offices, and even where they house some of the refugees. Now, when we were there, there was only about 20 refugees there, most of them being Volkswagen employees. And just a few months prior, there was over 200 refugees staying on the factory grounds, some inside and others out in tents in the parking lot. But because of the current lack of fighting going on in the western part of the country, a lot of people have since either moved back home or moved on to other places. This is where we're sleeping tonight. This is an air mattress inside an office. We had decided to visit the factory. Um, they've reopened. Um, it's important for the Ukrainian people to yeah, to make a living and, and to be productive. And there's a lot of cars that have been destroyed. I mean, estimates range from tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands. So this is a big, big step. Tomorrow morning, we are going to take a tour of the production plant, which I'm very lucky to have done in many countries and continents. But then we're going to go and visit the other camps around and that's where we're going to make the donations of the food and supplies that we have purchased with everyone's donations and our own donations today. We're also going to meet the mayor. I didn't expect any of that. And they have directly asked for our support. The, the school needs a bomb shelter. The, the Ukrainian government, uh, for when the schools reopen, are 
either strongly suggesting or requiring that um, the schools have a bomb shelter each, which is terrifying and hopefully unnecessary, but realistically is probably necessary. So that's why we're here in the Volkswagen factory sleeping on air mattresses. I felt like when we were four and a half hours away at an amazing show in Poland that we had to come and try to do something. I didn't expect to meet people and make new friends and for them to break down in tears ex telling us th about the, the terrible things they've seen in the war. And now we are literally next door. I mean, th behind these walls there are two dozen refugees whose homes are gone and they've been living here like this for, for three months. And that's not to downplay safety, electricity, Wi-Fi, running water, bathrooms, food. That's incredible but to not have a home to go to and it's, it's miserable. And yeah, again, it's a Volkswagen enthusiast visiting a factory, doing a sleepover in a factory, It'd be fun, but doing it every day with no end in sight. And we're doing it for one night. We are the same distance to the front line as we are to Berlin, basically, which is also terrifying that like, this is how close this is to, to millions and millions and millions of people. It's, it's pretty heavy. The donations we, we delivered earlier in, in Lviv were incredibly emotional. We not only delivered them, but we helped load uh, two shipments going out to the east. We <laughs> made new friends already. And I just hope we can come back when it's over and everyone is kind of free. Um, it's not a mistake that it's July 4th in America. Free domain free. Um, and it really hits home. So for everyone celebrating July 4th, I hope that you're safe. I hope that you're well. Happy 4th of July. And uh, I hope you're all safe and well. So, yeah. Wash your hands. Wash your cars. Goodbye. The next morning, Victor took us on the official tour of the factory to show us everything in motion. The first thing we saw was the chassis of the vehicles that were to be finished here at the plant. These ones were just dropped off by train. And then we met Alexi, who was also going to be part of the tour, and this was our first look at the assembly line. It was early morning, so we were getting there right as the first set of cars were going to be going through the assembly process. For now, I'm just going to shut my mouth and let you guys enjoy the sounds of the factory. So this is the, the jig for the complete Just chassis. An, uh, one minute. Yeah, this uh, is the rear subframe and you can see the mounting points there. So the way Volkswagen designed the MQB platform is that everything has the same mounting points there. So if it's for a Seat, a Skoda, a Volkswagen, it's all the same mounting points. This is a rear strut, it's DCC, so it has digital dampening. And this is gonna be for the AV or the wire port. All right. Oh, God, please. Wait, <laughs> there's more boats. But yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And then this way or this way? This, this way, okay. And they're going to have an air tool or a battery tool for torque. Oh, yeah. Kodiak. Oh. Kodiak. Oh. 
Jamie's still here. Yeah. <laughs> they can put their name on it. <laughs> so, <all right. laughs> so then they will have it's battery powered and it will be set to the right torque. And they torque it up. And this is what everyone's trained for. This, every single item is used with the correct tool and is done once. And they will actually do what do the boat up. I have installed 500 of these on my cars, but to do it now, like <laughs> <laughs> pressure, pressure. Yeah. So because you know you're not doing it for yourself. No. So yeah, you can see the jig there, and it drops down through the holes. So when you see a lot of the holes on the control arms. This is what it's really for. It's not for saving weight or for, for access. After seeing the full assembly line, we got to walk through the rest of the factory which was housing all the humanitarian supplies, both for the refugees at the plant currently and for the rest of the country. And that pretty much brings us to the end of part 2 of our Driving to Ukraine series. In part 3, we head to the local town to drop off the rest of our supplies, meet the mayor of the town, and tour some of the schools that are in desperate need of supplies and renovations before the school year can start. We hope you've been enjoying these videos so far as it's meant to bring awareness to what's going on in Ukraine. But that's pretty much it for this video. In the words of Jamie, wash your hands, wash your cars, and see you next time.